There's something very exciting happening in the world of miniature golf. It has developed from being little more than a novelty diversion for kids into a family recreation designed to be interesting, enjoyable, and fun for all ages. This new generation of golf courses has brought with it a boom in miniature golf. It's estimated that it'll be played by more than 130 million people this year, generating more than a billion dollars in revenue for miniature golf course owners. Though it's miniature golf, it has become very big business. Miniature golf is a great business. Our business is very profitable, and the best of all, it's a lot of fun. We see people having a good time. It really made everything else take off. Our restaurant nearly doubled its volume, and the driving range facility really grew also. Honestly, I was a little surprised. As much as everyone told me it would be great, it didn't prepare me enough. This has been a very good investment for our corporation. It's paid off very nicely and will continue to do so, I think, because of the nature of the product that we have here. So what accounts for this kind of success all across the country? Well, part of the answer lies in the dramatic changes in the design and construction of newer courses. Probably the first thing you'll notice is that the newer successful courses are built for beauty. You won't find any windmills or fiberglass clown heads. Themed courses become old very quickly and have very little to encourage customers to come back time after time for the sheer pleasure and challenge. They can do well at resort areas, but 90% of the country's miniature golf courses are built in non-resort areas. Instead of golf holes themed in plastic, new courses are designed like elegantly detailed gardens with floral arrangements and landscaping that places players in a setting of natural and timeless beauty that plastic could never offer. No windmills, no clowns, and no gizmos. Uh, this is a putting course and beautified by the waterfalls, streams, and landscaping. That's one of the unique things about our course. We don't have all of those uh, childish features, so to speak, but the kids still enjoy coming here because of the, uh, the naturalness of it and the beauty of the landscaping and, and so forth. A nicely tended garden with plantings that some people may not be familiar with, some specimen trees. It puts people in the right frame of mind. Water is another very important element of newer courses. Splash fountains, waterfalls, and streams give a course character and personality. There's something relaxing about the sight and sound of moving water, and the way it interacts with the play brings fun and challenge to the course. Kids love it when the ball goes into the water. For them, that's great sport. And adults love to hit a shot that avoids the water and ends up near the cup. For them, that's great sport. The kids are crazy about the water. They love to get the ball in the water. And teenagers just love it. Uh, it's just fun. Little, little kids love it, teenagers and the adults. Water is essential to a miniature golf course. Uh, it not only adds aesthetic, uh, visual aesthetics, but also audio aesthetics. It's nice to hear the babbling brook in the background. The water comes into play on every hole that it borders. And the golf balls we use float so they can retrieve them from the water uh, with nets which we have on each, each pond. Newer courses, designed for profit, are usually built on a number of elevations. The mounds and hills provide real variety in the play, and with the landscaping, falls, fountains, and streams, the elevated course allows very natural buffers from one hole to the next, giving players on the course a sense of their own space, and giving anyone driving by an attractive invitation to come and play. The waterfalls are what uh, catches your eye immediately. The water fountains that we have and the streams and the landscaping is very attractive from the road. It brings people into the property. We've made the main waterfall at the top uh, face the highway, the entrance to our property, so that the general public would see it. Although the beauty of new courses is a real improvement over the flat, plain, predictable courses of the past, Ultimately, the success of a course is dependent on the way it plays. And that's where the new designs have had the greatest impact. It's a whole different game. A game of interest and challenge. But most of all, a game of fun. It's a game where parents and children go to play together. Not just a game that parents take their children to play. It's also become a great game for a night out on a date. 18 to 45 year olds are by far the largest group of customers. This is not just a game for kids anymore.
I would say that I have more adults than children playing here, which just blows my mind. We have people of all age groups. We have senior citizens groups come in, and, and, and every age group all the way down to uh, youngsters that have birthday parties, which we do. Designing an attractive course that promotes repeat play takes a very skilled and artful touch. There's a fine line between a course that is interesting and challenging and one that is difficult and frustrating. It's a question of rewarding players for the good putt without overly penalizing the player for a poor putt. One of the distinctions is that the holes on newer courses are much longer than those of older courses. High banks give holes uniqueness and interest. And natural obstacles or hazards such as trees, rocks, boulders, an open edge to a pond or fountain, sand traps, and rough give each hole its own distinct challenge. And some holes have undulating greens whose uphill, downhill design demands a fine touch behind the putter. And all of the elements, the length of the holes, the hazards, the water, the contouring, long breaking shots, and holes with multi-tiered greens encourage players to give real thought to each shot. How should it be played? Aggressively with a chance at a hole in one, or more conservatively with the safer prospect of sinking the putt in two or three. The interest and involvement, the challenge and the beauty of the environment add up to an enjoyable, satisfying and fun-filled experience that players want to repeat again and again. We have had a lot of people come back. There are a lot of re repeat play. And, uh, and it's great. Everyone's really happy. They think it's the, that the course is challenging enough, yet it's not too difficult. We have a very steady customer base and, uh, who, uses, uh, who use our miniature golf course. They come back all summer long. It's the engine that drives our facility during the summer. If our miniature golf course was not a top-notch miniature golf course, people wouldn't come back time and time again. One of the real innovators in miniature golf is Rich Leahy. Rich took over Harris Miniature Golf in 1986 and since then has built nearly 300 courses that are looked upon nationally as the new standard of quality in design and construction. We got away from building the gimmicky courses. I was building a miniature golf hole that plays interesting. What they wanted was something that was interesting and fun to play different breaks in the holes so a good putter can look at it and see how to hit the putt and get it to the hole so that uh, a child hitting the ball it doesn't roll down a straight path to get to the cup it breaks to the right it breaks to the left they have to avoid a sand trap or avoid a water hazard but continuing to keep the play of the golf course moving along usually a project begins with a meeting between Harris Miniature Golf and the prospective course owner more than two-thirds of the time, that meeting is the result of a referral from a previous owner. The people at Harris are recognized as experts in the field of miniature golf. And they are always ready, even eager, to discuss all aspects of the business, and always without cost or obligation. Frankly, it's the kind of expert consultation that's difficult to find anywhere else. But everyone who's ever had contact with Rich Leahy and Harris Miniature Golf comes away knowing they're committed to a 110% effort every step of the way. That commitment has created a host of loyal and successful customers. I'd done some studying on these things for about seven or eight years, and we flew around the country. We went to Wildwood, talked to Rich Leahy uh, because of his reputation, and we uh, liked what we saw over there. We decided to uh, utilize his services and build this this nice miniature golf course we have here. The Harris Company was, uh, was really great. We really didn't know what to expect, um, but they uh, really made us feel comfortable and showed us around and told us what they did and showed us the work that they do in the area around Wildwood, and I was really impressed. Initial design ideas are translated into a formal design layout with the help of an AutoCAD unit. But the real talent is Harris's team of highly skilled professionals who have an uncanny ability to visualize a beautiful golf course on unimproved land. Typically, they'll incorporate the existing topography to reduce or eliminate the need and cost for fill dirt or earth moving. The AutoCAD unit generates large full color renderings of the proposed course. These renderings are ideal for presentations to banks, zoning boards, or investors. Turning the plan into reality is like a piece of magic with a beautiful course taking shape 
where there was only an empty lot. A typical construction uh, timetable for us would be three weeks. I would send a crew of six guys to the location. Uh, they get up early in the morning. They typically work six or seven days a week. They work 12 hours a day. When my foreman goes to a job, he knows that the customer wants to get his golf course open as quick as possible. But more importantly, they do the extra things. He looks at that every day and he says, how can I make this better than the plan? What can I do to improve this angle the waterfall a little differently to get the absolute best exposure to the road? Change the stream a little bit so that it comes into play with another hole. Work on a bridge so that when people are crossing over a stream, it has a little special feel to it. Their workmanship was great and their dedication too. They worked many very long hours to get the job done. I really wanted the course finished for the 4th of July, and they made it happen. Well, I would say that the crew that they sent here, uh, and I say this with all sincerity, was probably the hardest working crew of men I've ever seen. They were on the job at between 6 and 6.30 every morning, and usually worked until well after dinner time. And I mean, they worked. One of the nice things about working with Harris is that it wasn't an add-on or a change order. Uh, when we wanted to change the type of rock we used, they said, go pick out the type of rock you want. When we decided to use a different sort of brick, there wasn't an added charge. From the standpoint of a developer, it's nice to be able to have at least one part of the project in a fixed cost basis and dealing with professionals who are not going to penny ante you to death for changes on a golf course. Certainly, the Harris courses are beautiful to look at. But just as important to the owner, they are designed and built with economies that grow out of experience and intelligence. Designed to keep customers moving through quickly and smoothly. And designed with the profitability of the owner as the prime consideration. I take a lot of pride in the, seeing the owners years later and talking to them about how their business has grown and how everyone who comes to their golf course tells them how wonderful it is. Statements like that or statements like miniature golf paid for itself in a year and a half it just makes you glow because you know these people are trying to make a buck and now all of a sudden they're doing great. It's raining money on some of them. It's just incredible. Harris was the best. They met their deadline. They were out of here before their deadline. It's a very profitable venture. The miniature golf course was really going to take up a small portion of the business and we really thought it would be just an accent to everything else. It has taken over. It is doing two-thirds, more than two-thirds of our business. The course that he built far exceeds anything that we had ever imagined starting out. I'm Rich Leahy, president of Harris Miniature Golf. All of the golf courses you've seen in this video have been designed and built by us, and we're proud of them. We'd like the opportunity to design and build a course for you. If you're interested, here's how to get started. Give us a call. We'll take you through the process step by step. There'll be no pressure and no obligation. We truly believe that no one builds a finer golf course than Harris. Invest a little time, find out more about us, whether you buy from us or not. I promise it'll be time well invested. I think miniature golf is a great business. Dealing with Harris Miniature Golf, we got expertise, we've got good people to deal with. Our business is very profitable, and the best of all, it's a lot of fun. I'd tell any prospective Harris customer that uh, you'll get everything you pay for, maybe more. They're very easy to work with, very honest. Anyone that is looking to have a miniature golf course built um, would be foolish not to look at the Harris Company. If somebody was going to build a park where they had a driving range like we have and batting cages as well, and they were going to put in a miniature course, I would advise them to do the miniature golf course first, and I would advise them to uh, see Harris Miniature Golf. If I'm building another one, the, the Rich would be the first one I'd call, and the only one.